I'd like to open with a question. Like, who here has struggled with their health? Who here would like to be healthier? Yeah. You know, and the fact that you're all here means that your health is important to you. You're, you're here on a Saturday. I mean, it's fantastic. And everybody wants to be healthy, and I think it's important to bring together all the beautiful ideas that we've had presented today and to talk about what actually is healthy and you know, what does it mean to you. So my name is Dr Mary Barson and I am co-director of Real Life Medicine with this fabulous human over here. And we do, we create online health and holistic online health and weight loss courses led by us doctors. And we have a 12 week mind body rebalance coming up in May. And before that, there's a seven day no food, uh, no, no food, <laughs> no, no, seven day low carb real food challenge that used to be called the no sugar challenge um, and if you just want a little taster of what we're about you could sign up for that for sure so i'm yeah, i'm a medical doctor i'm a rural general practitioner in rural victoria um, where i mostly work in uh, rural emergency medicine i'm also working youth mental health at headspace I am trained in focused psychological strategies. I also have a certificate of medical hypnosis, um, something we have in common. And um, I've got additional training in nutrition, in particular in functional medicine. Um, I've got diploma of children's health, diploma of palliative medicine. And before I was a doctor, I was a scientist. But I've never really quite stopped being a scientist, I would say it's fair. Got an honours degree in, in biochemistry, cell biology and molecular biology. And I used to work at the Walter Eliza Hall Institute in Melbourne where I studied molecular parasitology, mostly mitochondria. And mitochondria are these fabulous little parts of our cells. I get a little bit excited. Huh. And they, um, they are the, the, the main um, mechanism by which we become insulin resistant. Actually happens at the level of our mitochondria. They essentially are our metabolism. Bias disclosures. So yes, obviously we um, create online health and, and wellness courses, and I'll be talking about that a little bit at the end. Um, also, I reversed my obesity and polycystic ovarian syndrome and what was extremely severe insulin resistance with a low carb real food diet, and so I am highly biased towards it. Um, again, this is not individual medical advice. Okay, so I don't look like a fitness model. Honestly, honestly, this is frightening. I know I seem quite confident and I often quite am, but you know, am I allowed to stand up here in my size 14 body and talk to you guys about health and wellness and weight loss? Is that something I'm actually allowed to do? There's a little voice in my head will be like, no, sit down. I have this fear. And like this is a selfie that I've done recently. I do actually really have a story to tell. I've got lived experience having been obese, lived experience having stumbled into low carb and then stumbled into the science and found a way to get healthy. But I can tell you, this is me as a little kid. I can distinctly remember when I was seven years old and I just happened to be at my grandma's house and my cousin said a few things to me and I suddenly realised that I was a chubby kid. And I was, I was. I've, I have got, what, am I, what is it, Nicole? I'm not, not genetically unblessed. Uh, I've got a, a, the most insulin resistant genes a person can have. Both my parents have type 2 diabetes. My mum had gestational diabetes. I had severe PCOS that really flared when I was an adolescent. And I was a chubby kid. And I, I realised this is the first time I can honestly remember feeling like I wasn't okay because I was chubby. I really internalised that message. And if I got other messages from other loved people, people who loved me, saying that, you know, I was perfectly fine the way I was, I didn't internalise this. I actually became a professional body hater very early on in my childhood. And I didn't know another way to live. And indeed, you know, there aren't many photos like Lucy. I sort of edited them um, quite significantly. You know, I've been in a much heavier body and I've hated my body. And actually, you know, occasionally due to crash dieting before I found low carb, I could also be a lot slimmer. This is me graduating from medicine. And now I've got, I'm, I'm in a much lighter body there. Still absolutely hated my body. Because I wasn't perfect, I wasn't okay. This is the message that I completely internalized. And then, I had a daughter. So I can remember 
uh, she's a gorgeous little uh, primary school kid running around now, but I can remember looking at this beautiful little baby and we had some pregnancy complications and she was very little and just thinking that she was perfect. Like she was perfect just the way she was. She was perfect. And I had this stark realisation, like, you know, that the ground had just dropped out from under me that I didn't want her to hate myself the way that I did. And that was honestly the first time that I actually started to realise that I didn't need to. I was already low carb, I had healed my metabolism, I'd lost weight, I had great health, but that final piece of actually thinking, without being bodily perfect, I was actually okay, hadn't even entered my skull until I had my daughter. And then I started working, and it didn't take, didn't happen straight away, but I started working on strategies to improve my self-love, my self-kindness and my self-compassion. And I really do. I'm no longer a body hater. I've let that stuff go. And so I'm here. I'm standing in front of you in my size 14 body telling you about health, weight and health and wellness and weight loss because I've got expertise, I've got a story to tell and stories are powerful and we need to share our stories. So what is health? Well, we're all living beings. And I'm a biochemist, but well, yeah, I'm continuing biochemist. Life is beautifully complex. It is actually life, the cellular structures that make up life are the most complex structures in the known universe. There is nothing in the entire known cosmos that is more complicated than even the simple, most simple bacterium. We are really, really complex and it's a beautiful, ancient process. Life is chemistry. It is the chemical processes that go on with us, go, go along, go on inside us. And our chemistry is intricately entwined. It cannot be separated from our environment, the air we breathe, the food that we eat, the water we drink, even the people we interact with. They very literally define and change our chemistry and they can do that for the better or they can do that for the worse. And we are in an insulin resistance epidemic. Like this is the epidemic of our time. There are the majority of Australian adults are in, have metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance. And the reason that we do this is because there is a profound mismatch now between the environment in which we involved um, that forged our genetic makeup and our current modern environment. And it's complex. And if you want to nerd out with me, come and find me later and I will talk to you about how complex metabolic syndrome actually is. I would love to do that. But it is complex, but at its heart, it is, we have a genetic predisposition. And as Lucy said, actually, we are designed to be insulin resistant. This is actually something that we're supposed to do for short periods of time when we were evolving during times of food scarcity. If we could gorge on the summer fruits while, or the, the spring, the summer and autumn fruits while they were available and gorge on the available carbohydrates and get insulin resistant and really pack on some weight for a short period of time, that was excellent because we were more likely to survive the coming winter and the, and the related food shortages. So it's something that we are genetically prone to do some of us definitely more than others but it's the way that those genes then interact with our environment our nutrition is incredibly important this is what will push us along from normal insulin singling or insulin sensitivity to insulin resistance sedentary behavior is another factor it's important to be able to cultivate a joy of movement same with decreased muscle mass Toxins and microbiome, a very interesting evolving field of research. Stress, inflammation, not sleeping enough, all of these things will quite literally change your chemistry towards insulin resistance. And mitochondrial dysfunction is sort of one of the, the unifying factors um, that underpins all of this. We are just simply out of balance for how we were evolved to live and how we currently live. And we're complicated. This is, this, is, this is not even all of the biochemical processes that go on in, in one cell. We are complicated and yet we are also very simple. I find this slide extremely empowering because our bodies will naturally move to a homeostasis, to a better health, to a better balance if we can simply remove the things that are blocking us from getting back into a healthy balance. Nutrition, particularly if a, a diet low in carbohydrates, prioritising protein will support our bodies, movement, strength training in particular, and stress relationships, sleep and relaxation, all, they sound wishy-washy, but they'll do literally change your chemistry. And 
we have developed a very we're in a strange position, our society. We've developed a very transactional relationship with food. You know, food is just, we could break it down to units of energies. It's just calories. So if I eat this chocolate cake and I run 35,000 million miles, that'll be fine. Yep, that's okay. Yeah, I'm just going to eat. I'll eat all the chocolate cake and I'll run 45,000 miles. It's very, very strange. that This hubris that we think we can outsmart evolution and we can outsmart our own chemistry because our chemistry requires real food. But at the same time, we've got a real obsession with being thin. Does thin equal healthy? So these uh, young women in their undies, that was a Victoria's Secret model, uh, secret Victoria's Secret campaign, very controversial. It was like the perfect body. And in response to that, other people who didn't have the perfect body went out and got some fabulous photo shoots. So, you know, are these girls in the um, beige and black undies healthy? What about the other young women in the, the multicolored undies? Are they healthy? What about these young people in the stock photo eating pizza or TV dinners on the couch? Are they healthy? What about these models from Paris Fashion Week? Are they healthy? Hmm. Yeah. It might be useful to define what is healthy. Um, and it means something different to everybody. Everybody. The World Health Organization has certainly tried to define health, and they define health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So they don't mention weight at all. And we have this cultural obsession with being thin, but it's a double-edged sword. Um, there's a rebound to it, which means that people can be made to feel guilty or ashamed if they're not thin, but also people can be made to feel guilty or ashamed if they want to be thin. We're in this like lose-lose situation that we've created for ourselves. But while we have this cultural obsession with slimness and thinness, we're also in the middle of an obesity epidemic. And this, this is this is serious and it is robbing us of our not just years of our life but quality of our life as well but is it the obesity that is the problem this this is what i would like to unpack a little bit more and then of course you've got the medical dogma that is being overweight is bad this is an article from the australian family physician which is the peer-reviewed article for australian general practitioners and if you read this this is talking about all of the risks that people have if they are overweight or obese and it's terrifying like you're going to die by the afternoon every single organ system is in mortal peril peril if you are overweight or obese and then this article then goes on to describe how you can recommend very low calorie diets such as straight shakes essentially uh, for your patients. But does the evidence support this? If you are overweight, are you going to be dead by lunchtime? Interestingly, no. There's a wealth of scientific research that actually shows that being overweight does not increase your mortality to an extent, and there are important caveats here. This is one of the best ones. This is a study looking at over 13,000 Danish people, and they tracked all-cause mortalities. People who died for any reason, um, with their BMI and they controlled for every other risk factor, smoking, cholesterol, high blood pressure, triglycerides, socioeconomic stations, absolutely everything, and they just used BMI. And they actually found that people in the overweight category lived longer than normal weight people, and that the excess deaths in the overweight range were clustered in people who had a BMI over 35, so in the extreme, sort of the, the higher obese range, and that there were actually significantly more deaths in the underweight range. So I mean, what does this mean? What do we do with this? I really think that it's important for us to change our focus. And the fact that you guys are here means that you really are invested in your health, primarily. Primarily. That's lots of plosives. Sorry, everybody. And I think that weight loss at any cost, such as very low calorie diets, really misses the point because it focuses on the weight, you know? The weight is the main priority and the health is second or last. And the emphasis is on a certain number, a BMI, a number on a scale, or it's on the aesthetic. And it's psychologically dangerous, but it's also very metabolically dangerous. This is bad for your cells, it's bad for your mitochondrial health, and this is not trivial. Chronic calorie reduction uh, lowers our basal metabolic rate, and it, can, it does recover. It can with a low-carb real food diet, it can, but it can take years. So if it's not weight, then what? Well, it's the insulin. And I love it when Tim Noakes says, it's the insulin, stupid. And I think when I first realised this, I did feel a bit stupid for not having realised it before. 
insulin resistance is is the problem. This is what is, is robbing us of our health, of our life. It affects, it, it does affect every organ system. That big table that we had in Australian Family Physician, it was not the weight that was causing all of those problems. It was insulin resistant and elevated insulin. And insulin resistance and the lifestyle factors are the problem and weight kind of really just comes along for the ride. Weight is more of a marker of insulin resistance rather than the problem itself. And our esteemed, you know, Dr. James Mukey, in his in his opening presentation, discussed that people can be thin, and and be insulin resistant. They can be toffees, um, and people can indeed be overweight or obese and not necessarily have insulin resistance or have healed their insulin resistance before they've even managed to um, to achieve significant weight loss. And I love it. I'm just I'm so using this that we're all going to be hotties. We're just going to be healthy on the inside. I just love it. Thank you. <laughs> So can, in response to this, you must lose weight no matter what, to our cultural obsession with weight, to the medical dogma that it's all about weight, to weight loss at any cost, a new movement has ar arisen, the health at every size movement. And it's a very divergent move movement. Like People have different views, and I'm not saying that I speak for anyone in this movement particularly, but it, I would say that, you know, can you be healthy at every size? People in the health at every size movement believe that weight isn't the problem, it doesn't matter, don't worry about it. They also believe that you can't do anything about it, so don't try, and focus on other health parameters. However, you can do something about your metabolic health and you can do something about your weight will change as you do that. So can you be healthy at every size? To an extent, absolutely yes. It's not the weight that is the issue, it's the metabolic health that is key. I think a much more important question is, can you have health at any serum insulin level? And the answer is no. No, it's metabolic health that is the key. And the other thing is, it's okay to want to lose weight. You don't have to feel guilty or ashamed by having a weight loss goal. That's okay. But weight loss at any cost, where you will hate and berate yourself and do things that are damaging to your body, that just entirely misses the point. And so this is how I view health. My body is a healthy vehicle and I let, get to do lots of cool stuff in it. It's the vehicle that drives me through my life, allows me to achieve my dreams. And I love that it's healthy. It is a total, I'm a hottie. That is, I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you get healthy? Well, yes, I could nerd out in biochemistry, but I don't think that would be particularly helpful. You really can just keep it simple. This, you can support your own internal chemistry and your own internal biochemistry and balance and get into a nice homeostasis is the word by improving your nutrition, low carbohydrate, real food, emphasizing the protein, eating healthy fats, movement, strength training in particular, do something that you enjoy and stress, sleep, friends, relaxation. And this is what I do. It's simple, nourish your body with real food. These are a whole lot of meals that I've made recently and I not, don't particularly like cooking. I just throw things together very, very quickly. Movement, find something that you love. Movement is extremely important for your body and your mitochondrial health, but it doesn't have to be slogging away at the gym. It can be something that you like. I like to swim. I go swimming with my dad. That's us. We've um, just there competed for the 10th time in the very famous Lawn Pier to Pub ocean, um, ocean Water event. And we got little medals, which was cool. I swim with my daughter. She's not too happy about that because it's quite cold. That's in a river in the Tamar Valley. I'm from Southern Victoria, so I'm really happy about swimming in cold water, the colder the better. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and this is um, one of my other most famous, uh, my, my, my other most famous, my um, other like current strength training exercise is to walk and do everything while slugging around a 13 kilo baby. <laughs> <laughs> I also nurture my body with safe, intermittent fasting. It's never a punishment, it's never punitive, it's always a way of nurturing and nourishing your body by not eating for a little while and human connection. Here's some pictures of Lucy and I just being complete dorks. It's good for you, definitely good for you to be a dork. Sleep, relaxation, and the psychology. Learn to understand and work with your beautiful mind rather than rail and try and work against it. And by this, I don't mean discipline. Discipline is a finite resource and it is not useful long-term. Instead, what I mean 
is learning to understand your mind, learning un to understand how your mind works, improve your emotional literacy, improve your self-soothing skills, and essentially learn to understand the stories in your head, and you can learn to rewrite them. And now I'm going to quickly tell you about the 12-week mind-body rebalance. I do feel like a little bit of a wanker, so I do apologise, but look, I figured if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know. So I'm going to go through it quickly. Our 12-week mind-body rebalance is led by Dr. Lucy and myself, and it's a holistic program where we focus on the physiology and the psychology. We only do it three times a year, and we've got com one coming up at the end of May where we do coaching, weekly coaching via Zoom. We've got a fabulous and very thorough online um, course that goes with it and a beautiful, wonderful community where you get to connect. And the coaching is 12 weekly Zoom calls. And I mean, this is how much it would cost to, to get it face to face with Lucy or myself. You know, this is, you know, healthcare, this is what it costs. So online courses can be a very effective way to get, this, this is what it would cost, it's not the price, sorry. This is not the price, this is the, how much it would cost to get this uh, amount of coaching. Yeah, sorry guys, oh man. Um, and the content is a 12 week um, program where we go through these seven modules of health. With the first one we talk about food is medicine, everything you need to know about low carb real food, how to make it work for you, about alcohol, sweeteners, eating out, absolutely everything. We talk about the happy healthy metabolic hormones so you can really understand insulin and, and the related hormones. We do stress manage, uh, mind management, learning how to work with your beautiful mind. We do uh, safe intermittent fasting, how to do it properly. We focus on your gut health and stress management, extremely important, and modules on improving your sleep. And all up, this, um, this program has uh, over $2,400 value, but we sell it for much less than that. We also include 12 downloadable hypnoses. Uh, Lucy and I are both medical hypnotherapists, and this is a beautiful, safe way to harness your subconscious mind and to really supercharge your change. And that's how much it would be worth. And we have a fabulous amount of recipes, over 500 recipes, all made by these beautiful women, Thermo Foodie and The Chef, and they are all yours for free in the course, over $200 value. And the community, oh, I love the community. We've got members of our community here, people who've done the 12-week program, people who are in our monthly program. The community is what makes it so beautiful, and it's absolutely priceless. You can email access to us, you can answer, ask, ask us questions, and we will answer them absolutely priceless and for you beautiful Adelaide people we've got some bonuses uh, yeah steak knives right but wait there's more yeah if you use the code word Adelaide and it's in the back of your books uh, you get $50 off which is nice and we're gonna throw in our um, how to stop after dinner snacking a really important mind block for many many people we get that course for free and you can start right now even though the course doesn't start till May 20 you can start right now with your learning we'll throw in our four-week program which is an introduction to low-carb real food and you can and, and metabolic health you can get going straight away we also include our meditation course because stress management and relaxation is so important that is yours also for free and you can join us for our seven-day low-carb real food challenge and we also get um, a beautiful packet of mingle spices, which people have been mentioning. Mingle is a beautiful, um, it just no nasty, beautiful real food product that can make your meals at home taste really delicious. And you get that thrown in for free, as well as our 30 day medical um, hypnosis course, which is also just, it, it uh, supplements and accompanies everything that we do so beautifully. And you also get our Doctor's Masterclass package, which is a really great bonus because it includes uh, masterclasses on reading nutritional labels, which is a fundamental skill, really important that you know how to do that. Um, a masterclass on cholesterol, you know, what it is, what it isn't, and so that you can fully understand cholesterol within the, um, and how it links in with the low carbohydrate diet, as well as a masterclass on overcoming sugar addiction and a masterclass on menopause and weight gain, all really, really useful topics that we've thrown in there because we want you to succeed. And that is yours for free as well. So all up, it's over $7,000 in value. And with that code Adelaide, you guys can get it for $647. This is just for you. And so I would like to end, but good health, 
energy, brain health, increased health span, increased lifespan, being able to enjoy your life, it is underpinned by good metabolic health and you can improve your health with simple changes. And gorgeous people, this, you are not on a wagon. I know Emma talked about this before. There is no wagon. I know people talk about the wagon. You know, I was on the wagon and I fell off the wagon. You know, I was doing really well with my low carb diet, but then my boss yelled at me. And so I went into the tea room and I had a whole lot of M&Ms. And then I just, you know, I got thrown off the wagon. So, you know, what can I do? No, 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 no. No, your health journey is not this passive wagon ride that's pulled by you know a couple of horses that you are not controlling. Your health is not out of your control. There is no wagon. You can't fall off the wagon because there is no wagon. Nor is your can your health be derailed. It can't be derailed. It's not like I was going so well, but then I had a few wines with my friends and then we had some cheese and then we went past the gelati shop and then oh, you know, I was just derailed. It's not as if you're in a train that is driven by some driver that's not you that can hit the ice cream and uh, the rock of ice cream and then be thrown off the tracks and you have to forever be rusty and derailed on the side of the road because oh, I got derailed. What can I do? Absolutely not. This beautiful people is your health journey. It's an all-terrain four-wheel drive vehicle that can go anywhere and do anything. And if it hits those ice cream boulders, it doesn't matter. It doesn't break. It can, as soon as you choose to, get straight back on track and keep going. If it falls into the ditch of the M&Ms in the tea room, it doesn't matter. You can yank on the steering wheel and keep going. And you do not need to be perfect. You just need to progress. And as you progress, this is a scientifically proven fact, that self-love heals faster. You can learn to nurture your own compassion and your own self-compassion and your own self-kindness. And how you do that is with courage, share your stories, be brave, try something new, give low carb a go, be brave. Connection, incredibly important. Shame hates company and compassion. Be kind to yourselves. Thank you. <laughs>